what is going on boys and girls of youtube another top five coming at you very swift very very, very simple very basic what are you guys gonna be playing in the mid lane right now it's all mages luckily so you aren't too outside of your comfort zone if you guys like these videos you want me to produce more of them make sure you hit these little, the like buttons make sure the like buttons make sure you hit the like button on these videos and you subscribe to the channel please thank you i can't speak today so gonna count it down from number five to number one and just try to elaborate make sure you guys understand what's going on smitesource.com has all the builds you guys need we will be updating those as the pros evolve and develop their builds uh, so just be on the lookout keep using the site it'll be updated very regularly very quickly so number five on the list is janice which shouldn't be too uh, i don't want to say surprising it's not surprising we all know janice is good i've been avoiding telling people to play janice because he seems to need a higher skill or understanding or knowledge of the character to do well i've seen that have be a lot less common uh since this last patch hit and i think it's because that early game is way quicker and way easier to get through as a janice player whereas before farming boots and still using your ult level five with no cooldown and doing these things and just not having your builds online was a little bit harder well now janice is rushing right into full cdr you can go into the chronos pendant you can go into the spear of deso you go to whatever you need to get cdr online and get power online and having full cdr janice is core you're gonna get a lot earlier you're able to play the game for a longer period of time with your spamming of your two and your one and jumping around the map and it's just doing a whole lot better it's also i don't want to see say unskilled but it's less skill required when you're getting full cdr online and you can spam a lot more and a lot quicker and you're getting off four uses of your two and six portals in a team fight rather than two or three where where you wouldn't have cdr yet at that point in the game for those first couple team fights so janice coming online earlier is doing better getting the late game faster better use it use of your ults using it to move around the map is obviously core global alts are very very good right now have been for a while janice's alt has been good but i think players are starting to recognize they have cdr and just they feel comfortable they feel good in the fact that they have cdr online earlier that they're okay with throwing it out not always trying to hit it just using it in the event that it does hit in the uh, ability to rotate around the map to get your team out of team fights people are starting to to understand this basic use of janice a lot more and it's causing janice to do even better even though like he's already a good character you're already seeing top level players just dumpster games with him but you're just seeing him do better at a lower level so janice is number five on our list number four on our list should be another one that isn't too big of a surprise we've seen it played a lot it's soul soul is beefy soul is a beast of a god right we, we know she's doing doing better she got buffed a couple patches back the items scaling and being tweaked to definitely favor her and her play style it has been happening so soul's doing a lot better you saw spear of deso get changed get buffed get tweaked which makes her better in general you're getting life steal online earlier you're getting good power online earlier and you're getting penetration online earlier as well as an amazing passive she is a mage she's being played as a mage stop building her as an auto attack mage as an adc she's not an adc understand that she's not an adc she is a mage grabbing one or two auto attack items on her is is fine two is pushing it's mainly one it's like tell kinds if you're gonna grab any auto attack items it's like tell kinds but you're a mage play around being a mage your two it's hard as hell your ult it's hard as hell and your autos hit super hard you don't need to attack super fast they hit for five six hundred with passive up it's crazy so you're looking at building life steal on her sustaining through the team fights building the mage items and playing her as if she's a mage that does auto for a lot so you'll throw your abilities out and lead up your abilities with big hitting autos you won't sit there trying to run around only auto attacking like you are an adc you you aren't a pure adc you are a mage so the sooner you understand that the better make sure the, the auto attack item you're building is telkines you're looking at building some spear of the magus you're looking at building t uh, typhons she has good life steal in her kit and good sustain in her kit with her one she's just doing really well all around her clear in lane is fantastic her team fights are fantastic play around your adc play together look for focusing objectives because with you playing a super hard consistent hitting mage as well as having an adc in your duo lane you're able to kill objectives and shred objectives for free basically it's just it's that simple pen sustain lifesteal power being her core kit does it need a lot of cdr if you do decide to go cdr you go spear of desolation as a first item that's perfectly fine that's always good and something you can be looking at building so just be on the lookout for that soul is number four on our list hopefully uh, you guys have a lot of success and you have fun playing here. number three on the list gone through five thousand nerfs and still cracked out of his mind see him at the split pushing is still insanely relevant from the minions which is one of the most annoying aspects he has a really really good team fight because his one hits hard as hell in range form he's got set up on his two his ultimate has a slow or you can put down the tornado to just really be annoying for anyone in that team fight really good mobility still extremely hard to kill when you jump into melee form good setup doesn't 
all around mage that can be played in so many different ways that it is very difficult to deal with him her her i think that's her with her in all the situations and all the scenarios that arise in a game her laning phase is safe with super e good clear and just really honestly one of the more annoying gods because of the setup and poke you have from range and the ability to always know you can't die unless you waste your leap uh jumping into a fight you shouldn't jump into and then your mid game is great your late game is great your pushing is great your sieging is great your split pushing is great she's just solid all around her damage is high enough that she is a good pure mage and the sooner you recognize that and the more you play her the more you become just fluid with her you will find yourself winning a lot more games when you play the mid lane and you do decide to choose her that's tiamat that's our number three number two on the list is raijin now raijin got a big old spike arena almost out of nowhere uh, i believe his what was it dude something on him was tweaked at one point it wasn't his ultimate it wasn't his three i think his it was either like his passive or his two was tweaked and as soon as that happened he started being played all the time he's being banned in pro league games all the time his clear is amazing they got rid of the bad that boots phase that early game phase on Rajin that felt awkward they got rid of that so he's pumping out high amounts of damage he has really good mobility he has a very good setup he has an ultimate that can either allow him to push people away to keep himself alive pull people in to set up his team just do pure dam damage from range the cc immunity is very nice into a lot of the gods that are being played specifically a lot of the supports that are being played uh, your fenrirs and stuff like that raijin is just massive short cooldowns which does very very good with the passive with everything online so you can clear and then go right into a team fight after clearing and your abilities aren't stuck in that weird limbo where they're down raijin has had an immense amount of success at all levels low level i think he's one of the easiest to play because you're too slow so you throw your two on somebody it makes it so your one is very very easy to hit and then a high Higher levels like i said the cc immunity the consistent damage the good range the team play around the ultimate he really has everything he needs set up in his kit to be one of the top mages i think it took a little of everyone uh just experimenting with him and us finally seeing him come back because he was in the meta for years and then fell off very very hard people were saying he was bad and now he is back stronger than ever with a vengeance i think this removal of boots has really revitalized the play style a lot of these gods require that are coming back like these gods haven't played in a while i think just that that quicker mid game and coming online basically mid late mid game happening like right away is massive for someone like rajan and then number one on the list the most op strongest guy in the game period no questions asked i don't want to hear you arguing with me because you're full of poop is morgan lefay she has the best ability in the game her one is the strongest ability in smite that's just honestly there's there's no world where you are you are you in this so your one has three forms when you one and then one again right away you drop a hun bats alt down on somebody it does damage and pushes them away it's op it's the best peel in the game and i believe it's on a 12 second cooldown if you press one and then press two so when you press one it's triggering these use of three abilities right it's it, it's a second choice when you pop your one you're either using that hun bat sphere you're using a two which is going to slow and going to leave a slow on the ground a bigger area or you're using three out of that and it's putting a little uh illusion of you that hits people and just kind of distracts people it's the worst the three is the worst the two is good and useful for setting up and kind of running away from from range and fights uh but the one is the best the one is a mini hum all on a 12 second cooldown with full cdr you're cutting that down to like five six seconds which is unbeatable your two is a knockback at close range and a good amount of damage it is ridiculous so if you're being dove you'll two and one and that person will not be on you for three seconds and you will kill them and then your three is a ranged line that explodes at the end does not damage if you hit that part at the end and gives yourself movement speed so that's your a uh, movement ability in the kit it's a lot of movement speed it's for 24 movement speed you are super fast so pairing that with your self peel of your one and your two is absolutely nuts if you don't know the passive it's empowered blades so uh, every time you use an ability you want an enemy god you mark them uh, and that's how your ultimate is triggered if you mark them with your one two and your three then you ultimate you do a little bit of extra burst damage before you go into it right but these also empower your passive once your sword is gained all five symbols you become empowered gaining double the magical power buff and reducing the cooldown of consuming power by 10 seconds consuming power being your ultimate so this really is played solely around your ultimate for the most part but getting that bonus power going to a team fight is really really strong a lot of the time you'll hit gods and poke gods throughout the game with everything and then when you go into an actual team fight you'll go in and you'll use that one use of your one that you haven't used yet so like the the slow or the illusion you'll use one of those to trigger your passive and do massive amounts of damage i'm not gonna lie to you you could have no clue how this passive works and you'll be perfectly fine you can never think about this passive and this god is still the best god in the game so once you start implementing this passive into it you just get that much more of an advantage and then the ultimate cc immunity 
it does gain the movement speed from your three so if you three and then ultimate you will be moving around very very fast your movement penalty is gone so it's similar like baba yaga and stuff like that where you're able to to move left and right and throw abilities out and not be slowed down while doing so so you have that it's a ranged ability that does extra damage the powered blade will make it so your consuming power has a wider hit area if you decide to go for that if not it's a thinner ability it's still easy to hit that will heal you every time you land it on somebody and heals you for less if you have the same people multiple times and that's that i mean if if you are playing her and you're understanding how much self peel you have between the one and the two and how much damage you do between the one two and the three this this will one shot somebody the one and two will one shot somebody the three on top of it will one shot somebody and your ultimate being your get out of jail free card she is difficult to deal with it is hard for junglers to dive her she is by far the strongest mage we've had in a long time especially one without mobility we had tiamat and i'm telling you she's the strongest we've had in a long time that should explain a lot so hopefully you have fun playing her those are your top five mages hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'll see you all in the video later today later tomorrow and the next day